Let's dive into the dark traits of INFPs. But remember, we're doing this with love and a healthy dose of sarcasm. Every personality type has a dark side. Some are just more poetic about it than others. The eternal victim. INFPs have a black belt in mental gymnastics when it comes to feeling misunderstood. They could win Olympic gold in the everything is a personal attack category. Imagine an INFP stabbing their toe on a chair. Normal reaction? Ouch, that hurt. INFP reaction? Why does the universe conspire against me? This chair clearly represents the oppressive nature of society and my poor toe is a metaphor for my crush to dreams. But wait, there's more. This feeling of being misunderstood often extends to every aspect of their lives. Did someone forget to invite them to lunch? It's not an oversight, it's a carefully orchestrated plan to exclude them from society. Did they miss the bus? Clearly, the entire public transportation system is against them. Passive-aggressive Picasso. INFPs are masters of the art of passive aggression. Why confront someone directly when you can leave a trail of sighs, meaningful looks and vague social media posts? Picture an INFP saying, no, no, I'm fine. Really, don't mind me. I'll just sit here in silence, radiating disappointment like a sad, human-shaped microwave. But it doesn't stop there. They will write cryptic posts on social media, hoping the person who wronged them will see it and magically understand. They'll reorganize the entire kitchen, putting everything in weird places, and then when asked why, they'll say, oh, I thought it just needed a change. You know, like our friendship. The Procrastination Pro. Deadlines? Pfft. Those are just suggestions to an INFP. Why do today what you can put off until the last possible second, fueled by panic, caffeine and the belief that inspiration will strike like lightning? After all, nothing says creative genius like submitting a project that's still wet with paint and tears. But here's the kicker. They'll convince themselves that this last minute rush is when they do their best work. I work well under pressure, they'll say, as they start 20 page document at midnight the day before it's due. And somehow, through some mystical INFP magic, they often pull it off, reinforcing this harmful habit. The idealism extremist. INFPs and their ideals are like peanut butter and jelly. Inseparable and sometimes uh, a bit messy. But what happens when those ideals go into overdrive? Behold the INFP on a moral crusade. Armed with strongly worded letters and an unshakable belief in their cause, they'll fight to the death for recycling. Just remember, INFPs, not everyone wants to hear about how their choice of sandwich is destroying the rainforest. This idealism can lead to some pretty intense situations. An INFP might refuse to shop at a store because the CEO once said something that they disagreed with or they might spend hours arguing online about the ethical implications of eating avocados. No cause is too small, no battle is too insignificant. The emotional sponge. INFPs absorb emotions like a sponge absorbs water. Sounds great, right? Empathy for the win. Until you realize they're now carrying the emotional baggage of everyone within a 10 mile radius. Suddenly, Carol from Accounting's Bad Day becomes your existential crisis. Imagine an INFP saying, I can't come to work today. I'm feeling the collective sadness of all the world's orphaned puppies. This emotional absorption doesn't discriminate. They'll feel deeply for characters and books, movies and TV shows. They'll cry over commercials. They'll lose sleep over the plight of animals they saw in the documentary. It's exhausting but they wouldn't have it any other way. The perfection paralysis. Ah, perfectionism. The iron of peace frenemy. They strive for perfection in everything they do, which would be admirable if it didn't result in, uh, well, nothing actually getting done. Why finish a project when you can endlessly tweak it until the heat death of the universe? After all, Leonardo da Vinci took 16 years to paint the Mona Lisa, so surely your Instagram post deserves at least half that time. This perfectionism extends to every area of their lives. They can't send an email without proofreading it 17 times. 
they will rewrite their dating profile so many times that by the time they're done, they're too old to date. They'll spend hours arranging their bookshelf by color, then author, then by how the books made them feel. The daydream addict. Reality? No thank you. Who needs it when you have a rich inner world full of fantasies and what ifs? Imagine an INFP saying, Sorry, I missed the entire meeting. I was busy imagining an alternate universe when I'm a dragon riding, loot playing warrior poet. Just remember the INFPs, while you are lost in your daydreams, the rest of us are stuck here in reality, wondering why you are staring blankly at the wall with a smile on your face. Those daydreams can be incredibly detailed. An INFP might spend hours imagining conversations with people they have never met or creating entire worlds in their head. They might miss their stop on the train because they were too busy imagining what life could be like if they were a sentient cloud. The self-sabotage specialist. Success is overrated, right? At least that's what an INFP in a self-sabotage mode might tell you. They have a unique talent for snatching defeat from the jaws of victory. Got a great job offer? Time to convince yourself you are not worthy and turn it down. Someone showing romantic interest? Better push them away before they discover you are an actual potato in human form. This self-sabotage can take many forms. They might procrastinate on important tasks because they're afraid of failing. They might turn down opportunities because they don't feel ready, even though they're more than qualified. They might end relationships because they're going too well and surely something must go wrong if everything seems right. The oversharing overwhelmer. INFPs feel deeply and sometimes they just need to express those feelings. All of them, right now, in excruciating detail. Imagine an INFP saying, you asked how my weekend was, so let me give you a minute by minute breakdown of my emotional journey, starting with the existential crisis I had whilst choosing between oat milk and almond milk. Pro tip, if you ask an INFP how are you, be prepared for a response that's part therapy session, part philosophy lecture and part poetry slam. This oversharing isn't limited to their own lives. They'll tell you about the dream they had last night in vivid detail. They'll recount entire plot lines of books they've read, complete with their analysis of the themes and characters. They will describe the emotional impact of a sunset they saw last week, using metaphors that will leave you speechless. Here's the thing, these traits are also what makes INFPs so uniquely wonderful. Their deep emotions allow them to create art that moves people to tears. Their idealism pushes society towards positive change. Kind of peace. If you are upset or angry or sad, channel that emotion into a moody poem or an abstract painting. We know you want to. Thank you. Goodbye.